Hello there, sword friends. Today I have a video about a Daisho from a smith named Prismac. Now, a Daisho is just a set of swords meant to companion together. They don't necessarily have to go together, but they're intended to. And it's a katana, a wakazashi, and a tanto made by Prismac. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Prismac, he is a Polish smith that I have done business with for a number of years. I've bought a number of katana and wakazashi and whatnot from him and had them mounted up and done some cool stuff with them. And so, uh, Prismac contacted me not too long ago, asked if I was interested in some swords, and I was flush with swords at the moment, but I did say you can send them my way and I'd be happy to try and move them along for you. So these are on sale consignment. I have them in my possession and I'm going to talk about them and share them with you. And if you're interested, you can contact me below where I'll put some links to where they're up on eBay or something like that. Anyway, uh, on with the show. The first blade is this Tonto right here. Now, uh, Prismic started making Tontos. That's where I first remember his wares coming up for sale more than a decade or so ago. And his his style is, is kind of robust and at the same time bold. The Hamon patterns are usually pretty uh, significant. They, they're wide and big most of the time. Uh, but he also has evolved as a smith a little bit. These all come in a Shirasaya, which would be, well, it's not necessarily the most pretty Shirasaya, uh, but they are kind of ready to start if you want to lacquer them and do, do some sort of project. You at least have a base to start with. The blades are also in polish, but they aren't really etched very strongly, so the Hamon is subtle minor etchants or something like that would likely bring the hamon out more if that's what you want i've heard people have luck with lemon juice or something like that though i i never seem to have much luck with it anyway all of the blades come with the hamaki shirasaya and they're in a polish similar to this and they did bounce around a little bit over the pond so some of them have some superficial scratches and whatnot that you'll probably see throughout the course of the video anyway it's in oil right now but in some of the video you're probably going to see it. it looks very clear but this tanto is well, it's just nice to see his his improvement over time, or at least some of the differences that I've I've seen in the blades that he's had. The Tonto that I originally remember him having were kind of really big, robust, almost choppy things, and this is a little bit more delicate. It could be a steak knife, or it could be uh, something that, that pokes up in armor, and it almost has just a little bit of curve up at the top. It's a really dainty little shape at about a 10-inch knife, and while it has maybe an imposing look, it's not... It, it's very light and nimble and moves around. So as a as a companion, if you were in samurai armor or something like that and you wanted something light to move around, it feels it feels pretty solid. It's a delicate looking knife. I like the overall shape. I like that it has a little bit more curvature up towards the tip. It also has some good command of taper, which makes it, I don't know, just kind of move around really elegantly in the hand. That is the way it feels right now. I imagine once it's mounted or has any, any more <laughs> weight added to this end of it, which is likely going to be the case if it's ever finished, um, it'll feel even more, more agile in the hand. The Wakazashi is the next one to talk about, and this is probably the most uh, prismic of the blades that I've seen. So Prismic historically has had really bold hamons, really kind of wild patterns and stuff that have gone around on the blade. And this one uh, is is what I what I like a lot about his style. It has really kind of big uh, gnome pattern, I think is what it is, an erratic kind of choji pattern on it. It rides up over the kasaki, which is an okasaki, something I don't typically see him do. But again, uh, it's evolved a little bit. He has a lot better command of distal taper. It's narrowing down a little bit. The kasaki is reasonably well formed. And then the pattern also stops and it becomes a little bit more of a Suguha style hamon or something. It straightens out a little bit at the kasaki, which is what, as I understand it, they're supposed to do. And uh, and this looks the part. It's it's really quite nice. It feels like a more robust, substantial chopper. And so if you were to, to have this mounted up and, and polished to any finer degree, I imagine there's a lot to see under this wakazashi right here. Anyway, this one feels substantial. It feels it feels like it's going to be a big chopper. Not grotesquely so. It's not bad to move around. Wakazashis generally aren't. Because they're shorter, the point of balance is generally moved down a little bit, and they always feel a little bit more agile in your hand regardless of weight. But this one feels like it's going to do a decent job in the cut. It has a relatively high shinogi. Uh, the polish on it is, is clean, though at the same time, again, it's subtle. He doesn't etch them a lot, and I think with, with a deeper etch, you could really bring out a lot of character in the blade here. Now the polish on this one is marred a little bit on the Kasaki. There are some some more scuffs and, and whatnot, some imperfections in the polish, but in terms of a place to start, it's it's pretty solid. All right, now I'm going to talk about the Katana, and this one is just shows a lot of progress. It's really fun to have seen Prismic's work more than a decade ago and see how he's 
evolved as a craftsman and and also to to I think I'm in a better position I should say to appreciate some of the nuances that he's putting in swords because I probably would have gone over my head when I started this channel but uh, effectively one the way this sword feels it's not a big sword at 27 and a half inches but it's not particularly small either 27 and a half inches of, of blade but it has kind of the same kind of wider profile that I've, I've seen in many blades from Prismic, a reasonably flamboyant Hamon, but I'll talk about that in a minute. But it also just feels lighter. He's really done a lot to make his blades feel a little bit more nimble than they did. And this sword, without a handle, without all the kind of counterweight that is going to accompany the blade here, feels, you know, like it has authority in the cut, but is also quite a bit more nimble than I would have expected. It, it doesn't feel as as brutish as the appearance kind of lets on and really from what I've expected from Prismic a lot of his blades have been really stout really robust uh, kind of meaty choppers that you'd want to take to war this is a little a little bit more genteel and so uh, good on him for figuring out some distal taper how to profile how to take some of the weight out of those blades anyway uh, apart from the feeling which I appreciate the evolution of this shows a much more complex hamon. So there's a Choji Midari hamon, at least from what I can see, in this bottom half of the blade. And then on the Mana Uchi area, it transitions to a Seguha hamon, and then runs out over the, the Kasaki here, which is a little bigger than average, but not, not necessarily huge. Anyway, there's a complex hamon here that you don't typically see anywhere. There is a name for it. It's a, a school of Japanese swordsmanship, or sword making, I should say, used this style hamon, or it was... I think that's the case anyway, and I've had one other blade from Rick Barrett in my collection that had a similar style of Hamon, but uh, it was a thing that was done historically, just not something that you see commonly, and it's really cool to see. There's a really kind of bold, erratic pattern here that then transitions into something else, and so you kind of have uh, a sampler, right? It's <laughs> it's like a sword flight, right? <laughs> Just a, a bunch of different patterns on the sword all at once where you can appreciate them on one blade. But uh, there is historic precedent to do this. It just is eluding me in terms of what the name was. But the katana as well feels pretty solid in the hand and has a cool pattern on it. Now again, minor bits of imperfections are, are certainly present on them, but this has really been fun for me because I've gotten to see some of the way Prismic has evolved in his craft. And he, he certainly has. Anyway, uh, these swords, they're up for sale. They don't have to go as a die show, but it'd be cool if they did. They all come with Shirasaya and a basic polish, but I would say take the Shirasaya with, and the polish with a, with a certain measure of imperfections expected. Uh, for example, in the katana, there's little fillers and stuff here. Uh, some of the polish as well has little bits of rust that have formed. I've cleaned them off and whatnot. They're not, they're not necessarily bad, and they're all ready to go, but it's not perfect. These are kind of ready to either be used uh, if they're mounted up and you can use the polish as it is and sharpen and cut with them and not ha necessarily have to invest a lot of money in a polish. Uh, likewise, you could keep them in Shirasai if you want. The Shirasai is fine, but it's not necessarily great for display because there are some spots where there's cracking or filler used or something like that. But if you're going to put lacquer on and if you're going to use it as a base to make a scabbard or whatnot with, then you have at least something to get started with uh, without having to do a whole bunch of woodworking. All right, sword friends, it's a short video today. I am not going to really show much else on these swords because there's not much else to show. You got some cool photos and close ups of the blades and the shapes, and there are also some measurements in the description down below if you're interested. Uh, but basically, it's an introduction to Prismic's work for likely many of you who have never heard from him before. And if you are keen on the work that you see here, but maybe these don't fit you, reach out to Prismic. I'll try to put his uh, information in the description down below. I've had him make Katana and Suba and Tantos and Wakazashi and all sorts of stuff, and I've always been happy with the work. So anyway, these are for sale though. If you're interested, feel free and reach out to me. Hopefully they're still for sale if you are interested based on when you watch the video. There'll be links to eBay or whatever, wherever they're sold um, in the description down below. If you're not, then no worries. Hopefully it was still interesting. There's some cool shapes that are, are put here, some cool different style hamon, some uh, different kasaki that are on here as well. And on top of that, there's the cool hamon that he put on the katana, which is one thing, then the other thing, and those are not things that come up particularly commonly, and it's cool to see. So hopefully it gave you some ideas for maybe a project or something that you have uh, in your future. Anyway, that's all I've got. Cheers, and thanks for watching.